In this lecture, we're going to take a look at Mississippian culture, a uh, Native American culture that had its peak from about 750 CE to 1500 CE. Mississippian culture could be found in the Midwestern, Eastern, and Southeastern regions of what would become the United States. Mississippian culture was maize-based in its agriculture. We'll talk more about maize in another slide or two. Uh, these were hierarchical societies that were noted for the development of chiefdoms or systems of political structures that had chiefs. They had the development of institutionalized social inequality, so that social hierarchy that we've uh, come to associate with the modern world. Uh, there was centralization of political authority along with uh, religious power in the hands of just a few citizens in these cultures. A Mississippian culture was uh, rather fragmented. There were hundreds of chiefdoms, as we will see later in the, in the uh, presentation. They were noted for uh, ritual mounds. Some of these were burial mounds, some were not, and archaeologists and historians continue to debate over the significance and uses of some of these mounds. There are thousands of these mounds that still remain across North America. Uh, the trade networks of Mississippian cultures extended across most of North America, uh, as far west as the Rockies, north to the Great Lakes, south to the Gulf of Mexico, and east to the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, the Mississippians did not have a formal writing system and did not uh, make significant use of stone architecture. They did some work with naturally occurring metal, but they were not known for iron or bronze smelting. Pictured on this slide is a human head effigy jar, or a, a jar that is designed to look like a human head for ceremonial purposes. This dates back to approximately 1400 CE, and it was found in modern day Arkansas. Mississippian culture is noted for the development of very sophisticated artistic achievements. Pictured on the left is a stone effigy pipe from the Spiro Mounds, S-P-I-R-O. This is an archaeological site that is uh, located in present-day eastern Oklahoma. This was a major settlement from approximately 800 to 1450 CE. Uh, this pipe is known as the Grizzly Man Pipe or the Kneeling Rattler Pipe. Um, in the center is an image of a carving of a Mississippian warrior that dates to approximately 700 CE. And uh, copper was a component in this. You can see the, uh, the oxidation of the copper there. On the right is a painted ceramic jug showing the mythical creature known as the underwater panther, noted from a Mississippian culture. The jug was unearthed at uh, Rose Mound in Cross County, Arkansas. It dates between 1400 and 1500 CE. This map shows the location of the main subsets of Mississippian culture found in the present day United States. As you can see, the waterways of the Mississippi River were integral to the connections between the various societies. These waterways, serve, waterways served as uh, important trade routes. Maize was a fundamental component of Mississippian society. If you're unfamiliar with its history, uh, we call it, of course, corn today, but the maize was developed from a wild grass, grass known as uh, teosinte, T-E-O-S-I-N-T-E. -E. The kernels of the teosinte plant were quite different from the kernels of uh, modern-day corn. These kernels were quite tiny, and they were not joined together like the kernels on the corn husks we see today. They looked uh, more like seeds you would find in uh, grass used in uh, lawns today. Um, in Mesoamerica, between 6000 and 7000 BCE, domestication of maize began. Uh, from about 1800 to 1200 BCE, domestication of maize spread throughout the Americas. Although recent archaeological finds in the American Southwest suggest there were a few pockets, a few early pockets of uh, maize production uh, dating back to as early as 2500 BCE. Uh, selective breeding led to increasingly larger uh, maize ears and kernels. 
Uh, Serpent Mound is technically part of the Fort Ancient culture, which was along the Ohio River in parts of modern-day uh, Ohio, Kentucky, West Virginia, and Indiana. Archaeologists originally thought the Fort Ancient culture was an extension of Mississippian culture, but it appears to have developed independently. I'd like to include it, though, because it's an example of this type of mound building, a very visible example. Uh, both the Mississippian cultures and the Fort Ancient culture shared many features, though. There was extensive trade between these related cultures. Now, this um, mound structure was built around 1070 CE. It's an effigy structure. It is located east of modern-day Cincinnati. Uh, it's about a quarter mile long. Uh, the serpent sites not contain any human remains, at least none that we have seen. Um, the mound's coils or the uh, serpent coils may be connected in some way to the solstice and equinox. So this may have served uh, uh, for astrological or astronomical purposes. Um, interestingly, when Europeans began to explore the Americas after arriving and after Americans um, had settled some of these regions and came across these mounds, um, they re refused to believe early on that these were Native American structures. They seemed too sophisticated, and it wasn't until, really until the 20th century that people began to accept that these were uh, ancient cultures of peoples that no longer uh, occupied those lands. Uh, Mississippian culture is divided into a number of periods. The early Mississippian period is noted for the abandonment of uh, traditional tribal ways for centralization and uh, settled agriculture. It's noted for the production of surplus corn and the, uh, the development of regional chiefdoms. Um, the early Mississippian period was noted for rapid population growth as well. The middle Mississippian era is often considered the high point of Mississippian culture. There's a significant expansion of uh, of uh, great metropolis centers and ceremonial complexes like at Cahokia in present-day Illinois, which we'll talk about a little later in the presentation. There are formation of other complex chiefdoms at this time, and there's a spread and development of, uh, of art and symbolism and mythology in this time period. The late Mississippian culture, there was a significant uh, uptick in warfare, in political unrest, a number of population changes, some higher, some lower. The population of the city of Cahokia uh, dispersed in this time period, perhaps 1350 to 1400. Uh, they may have, the Cahokians may have migrated to other rising political centers, or it may have just uh, dispersed without the reformation of a new center. Um, in this time period in the cities, you can see a number of defensive structures which hadn't been present in earlier um, urban settings. There was a decline in mound building and ceremonialism, and the populations of most areas, most settled areas, dispersed or experienced a severe social stress by 1500 CE, and we'll talk about reasons for the decline a little bit later in the presentation. This map shows the complex web of waterways that uh, makes up the Mississippi drainage basin. The Mississippi River has the fourth largest uh, drainage basin in the world in terms of area. Um, in terms of uh, outflow, it's not uh, that high on the charts. In fact, it's at its peak, it's only like uh, something like 8 to 10 percent of the flow of the Amazon River. Um, so it's a much slower moving river, although, you know, significant in its own, own ways. The basin covers about 1.2 million square miles, and it includes all or part of 32 U.S. states and two Canadian provinces. Uh, it covers nearly 40% of the land mass of the continental U.S. So this system of interconnected waterways, again, was integral to the development of Mississippian culture. Uh, SECC, the Southeastern Ceremonial Complex, uh, developed independently from other Native American traditions. Um, it was uh, influenced by and influenced a number of other cultures in the region. Um, one of the commonalities to this is that the belief in an underworld, which was a chaotic realm, and an overworld, which was noted for order and stability. Now, these two worlds, the underworld and the overworld, were in composite 
composite, excuse me, constant opposition to each other. Uh, for humans, uh, the goal was to achieve harmony while harnessing supernatural forces as needed. So it wasn't a true good and evil sort of world. It was chaos versus order. Uh, the overworld, the dominant um, mythological or religious uh, iconic figure were the Thunderbirds. In the underworld was noted for the underwater panther was the, the main deity. Cahokia is uh, the most important of the Mississippian cities. It's uh, located, it was located near present day St. Louis. Its peak, as you can see on the slide, 700 to about 1400 CE. Uh, this was a major uh, Mississippian urban center. It was also one of the earliest centers of Mississippian culture. Um, at its peak, up to about 40,000 people. It's uh, roughly a 2,200 acre site by comparison. A square mile is about 640 acres, so three and a half square miles or so. Um, no U.S. city um, would eclipse the size of Cahokia in terms of population until Philadelphia did so in 1800. Um, its formation or foundation, legend by legend, a, a king came down from the sun, and the king's role was to mediate between heaven and earth. The Mississippi and its tributaries, as we have already noted, were highways of trade. Approximately one-third of North America was directly connected through trade networks to Cahokia. Um, the, the pyramids that were built there um, have a base larger than any that are found in Egypt for contemporaneous uh, comparisons. Uh, the inhabitants uh, did not leave any written records, although there were some uh, carved symbols, so this sort of a proto-language we think uh, was being in the process of being developed at its peak, but uh, we're not quite sure what all of it translates as. A uh, interesting feature of Cahokia is uh, known as Woodhenge, so it's a play off of the uh, Stonehenge of uh, British history. Uh, this was a circle of posts used to make astronomical sightings. The posts here uh, have been reconstructed for uh, uh, for tourists. The original wooden posts um, have long since rotted away. It provided accurate predictions of summer and winter solstices. Uh, we believe it was used to time plantings and harvestings. Uh, some posts seem to have also been used to denote festivals in the calendar year. Uh, the picture that you see here again is a uh, uh, rebuilding of the site which took place in uh, 1985, but you can visit it if you're in the area. The city of Etowa uh, had its peak from about 1000 to 1550 CE. It's west of modern day Atlanta and it's named after the uh, river of the same name, the Etowa. Uh, it's noted for higher technology, especially the use of copper tools. It was a very uh, significant trade destination for southeastern Mississippian culture. Um, probably as many as 5,000 people at its peak. Uh, the Etowa Mounds um, are another feature of this uh, Etowa site. Um, in the center was a 63-foot tall platform. It was likely the home for the priest chief of the culture. Uh, there was a smaller mound that uh, we believe nobility was buried in. Uh, they were a wearing the, the people who were buried, that is, were wearing elaborate costumes and they were accompanied by items that would be needed in their, or believed to be needed in their afterlives. Uh, recent research indicates that Etowah uh, contained over 150 major buildings. This map shows the location of um, the significant Mississippian archaeological sites. Again, you can see that connection to the major rivers of the Mississippi drainage basin. Uh, Mississippian cultures declined for a number of reasons, uh, not the least of which was the introduction of Eurasian diseases in what we would, uh, will be calling a later lecture, the Columbian Exchange. Uh, horses um, played a role um, after the Europeans arrived. There was a switch by some groups to nomadic um, lifestyles away from sedentary agriculture. Uh, there was a disruption of trade networks with the arrival of Europeans, in part because Europeans had 
certain commodities and trade items like firearms that were not available to uh, uh, trade networks and trade partners in the Mississippian cultures. Um, there was a rise in this time also of uh, new native confederations in the 14th, 15th, and 16th century. Um, and many uh, archaeologists and historians believe there were some significant climate changes that happened in the 13th, 14th, and 15th century, probably associated with the Little Ice Age, which you may be familiar with from European and, uh, and uh, Asian history. Um, it appears that there were um, a number of periods of drought and some especially um, cold winters that seem to have reduced crop yields and affected uh, both population growth and led to some declines as well as disrupted uh, existing political and religious systems. Um, as we have discussed in other lectures, um, ecological change and climatological change often brings with it uh, disruptions in belief systems and political structures because people begin to lose faith in the existing um, structures. Uh, that brings to a close our brief examination of Mississippian cultures.